Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookiee, I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video. Today, actually funny enough, third video of the day. I'd, only during um, Halloween time where I have to just release crazy videos do I just sit down and release more videos. So today we're going to be talking about Fate Grand Order because they decided to actually start talking about stuff. Imaginary Scramble pre-release campaign and the Caldea Broadcasting US Branch Volume 16. So let's go into it. The U.S. Branch Volume 16 is, I believe, when the next live stream is. The date is October 26th. They don't really have anything else. Just tell you, like, hey, we're going to have these dudes on here. Get ready for it. The guy from Anaplex of America will be there. Albert, everyone knows. As well as some other scheduled stuff. Newest game information and stuff like that. So this is where I would expect them to release the actual date for Imaginary Scramble, because this is the pre-release campaign for Imaginary Scramble, not actually Imaginary Scramble. Um, Imaginary Scramble pre-release campaign for the US, obviously the login bonus is going to have some bronze apples, five, and then five silver apples, and then five golden apples, the more time goes on. A limited tam time campaign will also be going on, where one fourth AP for Arts 1 and 2, um, Fuyuki to Atlantis, and one half AP for Olympus. And then one half AP for all Arc 1, 1.5, and 2 free quests. This is always a good time to get your grind on if because there's literally nothing else to do. The one half AP for free quests will only apply to the first three times when a free quest is cleared. From the fourth time onwards, the, the AP cost will be the regular one. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Some new rank up quests for Abby, for Yang, and for Mysterious Heroine XX because they are kind of focused. Uh, there's a foreigner focus on the banner. On the, on the next event, so this will make it so Abby now has increased MP gauge for each turn, three turns, and increased MP strength for all allies. Yang has it so if she uh, applies invincibility for one turn, increases MP gauge for each turn, three turns, and changes into a large number of uh, crystal stars and change to apply target focus one turn to yourself. And Mysterious Heroine X gets an increase of your attack of one attack, effective with overcharge, deals significant special attack damage to a single saber class enemy strengthened. That's her Noble Phantasm upgrade, so there you go. Some limited time master missions, clear Anastasia, clear Gotardong, clear Sin, clear Yuga Shitra. And the summoning campaign features Yang, Fran Saber, Raiko Lancer, and Mysterious Heroine XX. You'll notice how Abby is not on this banner, even though she got a strengthening up, <laughs> she's not on it. Um, just to quickly go over them, I guess? Yes, Mysterious Heroine XX. She's on one quick, two arts, two busters. First skill is piloting EX, grants invincibility, increases on attack for one turn, 50% attack up for one turn. Gain crit stars, reduce on critical star absorption one turn, 20 stars, 100% absorption rate. And the third skill is justice from the end of the world, ignore invincibility for one turn, charges on NP gauge, increases on damage against threats to humanity enemies. 30% NP and 50% against the, the threats to humanity. Her passive skills are existence outside the domain D. Gain two crit stars. And increase debuff resistance. Cosmo Reactor, independent action A, and writing A. So that's a increase the star generation, crit damage, and quick performance all by 8%, 10%, and 10%. Her third Appen skill is a bonus against moon cancer enemies by 30%, which is pretty nice. Um, because most Moon Cancer enemies are threats to humanity. Except for one. That I can think of, anyway. And her Noble Phantasm, like I mentioned, gets strengthened, so she deals damage to one enemy, plus a bonus 200% damage against Saber class enemies, who are... and the MP level 1 is 1200%, and then at the end it's 1800%. Uh, and then the increase the attack is 20% at charge level 1, and if you get to all the way to the final one, it's 60%. Um, this is a very interesting unit, uh, mainly because she really is good at fighting against saber enemies who are threats to humanity. Not a lot of though, <laughs> but she also does have the benefit of being a single target um, foreigner, so she's really good at gets taking out berserkers. The one thing that I've never liked about her is that all her big attack boosts last one turn. Her skills at least don't have a quick cooldown, so it's like five turns, four turns, five turns. So it's not too bad in the grand scheme of things, but, uh, I don't know, I don't know, I never like it when a grant invincibility buff is also the same as your attack buff, and they're both one turn. <laughs> so if you're gonna have a lot of attack for one turn, or you're gonna save yourself one turn, 
it's kind of a, a mess, but you know, obviously it's Mr. Heroin XX. Who doesn't like her? Look at her. Look at this fantastic swimsuit unit. Next, we have Ryko Lancer. Uh, I don't have anything to say. I, there's really no reason for me to go over this unit. Hey, do you want Ryko Lancer? You already know. You already know if you want her or not. I have her. I think all her skills are MP10. You know, uh, at level 10, do you know how much I use her? Very rarely. <laughs> Usually only during summer events. So there's no reason for me to go over what she does. You already know if you want her or not. There we go. That's all I have to say. And if you're going for her, Godspeed to you. Fran Saber, we'll go for her. Two quicks, one arts, two buster. First skill, Summer Galavansom D+. Can be used when MP gauge is 10% or higher. Increase on MP generation rate for three turns, but also reduces your MP gauge by 10%. It's a demerit. But the MP rate up is 80% at level 10. Hollow Lamentations of the Intense Heat A can only be used when own HP is 500 or more. Reduces one enemy's attack for three turns, but then removes removes their buffs and then deals 500 damage to you without killing yourself. 20% down in attack. Third skill is Moderate Load C. Increase on attack for three turns. Increase on MP damage for three turns. 500% chance to inflict a burn. Unstackable 200% for five turns to self. 20% attack and 20% MP damage. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance E, Writing EX, and Madness, Madness Enhancement E, which is a 10% debuff resistance, 12% quick performance, and 2% buster performance. Okay, sure. I mean, yeah, I guess she is still having suffering from some form of it, even though she's able to make sentences now. Anti-Berserker Attack Damage Aptitude. She does bonus damage against Berserkers on her third of Pen skill. From Noble Phantasm is a rank D through B. Anti-Unit. Five hits for a quick single target. 500% chance to inflict charging status for one turn to them. 20% chance to activate the debuff below. When activated, stun all enemies except the enemy with this debuff one turn after one turn. Uh, MP, at MP level 1, it's 1,200%. And then at the level 5, you get her MP5, it's 2,000. Jesus Christ. Chance to stun them for one turn is uh, at charge level 1 is 60%. If you get it all the way to charge level 5, it is 100% chance of stunning. Um, so yeah, this unit. I really like Fran, actually. <laughs> I think she's a very cool uh, single target saber. She has some caveats, obviously, because there's negatives to her effects. But the negatives are usually work themselves pretty out. I've always said that the one problem with a lot of quick servants is the fact that they have problems with MP generation. Fran gives herself 80% MP. The only downside here is reducing her MP gauge by 10%. And that, that for that reason, I think it's actually best if you have Fran with like MP2 at least. Just because you're able to like more take advantage of the excess NP that you get from her and stuff like that. Um, which is not a lot of units I would say are better specifically. Like a lot of units I would say like, oh yeah, MP1 is enough. For Fran specifically, because of the way her first skill is, I actually kind of feel like you don't need her at MP2, but it would definitely be better for you if she was MP2. Which is stupid, I guess that's every unit. Whatever, you know what I'm saying. I like her design. I think it's very interesting. Of all the Summer Servants, she's, I think, the only one that has this many negative caveats to what she does, but I think it usually ends up working out. And yeah, who doesn't like Fran? Look at her. Adorable. Everyone's favorite daughter, who wears nothing but bandages at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, moving on. And finally, we have Yang who is a foreigner, who has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill, which is the one I went over, which is gonna get a buff, the embodiment of 3,000 affections, grants self-invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns, gain crit stars, find a chance, chance to draw the attention of all enemies to self for three by 300% for one turn, 25 crit stars in the past. It only, only males attacked her. And you got 15 crit stars over the 25, so a definite improvement. I understand where they were going thematically with this, but come on. That, that, there's a certain point where a lore holds a unit back sometimes. One's favorite concubine A uh, absorbs all enemies NP gauge for by one. The amount of NP gauge, the NP is charged by multiplying with the number of enemies gauges drained, reduces their defense for three turns. 
the MP to absorb is 20%, so if there's three enemies, there's a chance of getting 60% um, MP. Yeah, I think that, yeah, yeah, the amount of MP charges is multiplied by the number, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, three enemies, 60%. Defense is down by 20%. Third skill, Son of a Calamitous Star A grants self the Living Flame buff for three attacks, three turns. Living Flame reduces the enemy's defense by 10% for three turns when taking attacks by them. Inflict burn for three turns to enemies when taking attack by them. Increase your own defense for three turns. 100%, uh, 1,000 burn damage and defense up 20% at level 10. And then passive skills is existence outside of the Domain EX and Divinity B, which gains two crit stars every turn, increase on debuff resistance by 12%, and then also increase da own damage by 175. Her third skill is a bonus against rulers, and her Noble Phantasm is a one-hit single target uh, arts, four hits, inflict burn for three turns on them, the damage is 900%, and then the burn damage that you get from the NP is 3000, and at level 5 it's 1500%, and 6000 burn damage, overcharge deal extra damage to enemies with the burn debuff, a bonus um, is 150% at charge level 1, and then if you get it to charge 5000, 5500, 5, it is 200%, now, obviously, the thing that I think is kind of, like, weird is that you don't inflict burn first, I think is how it goes. So you have to make sure before you hit someone that you have burned them already. Otherwise, you're just kind of wasting some damage on this NP and stuff. But yeah, I think she's kind of neat. Um, having I actually have her, and I've used her in the past, and I think my main problem is always with the damage. But it's because I always forget that they need to be on fire before I hit them with it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I like Yang. I like her design. I like her. Um, I like her design. I like her. Who wouldn't like this? Come on. Absolutely adorable. Oh, look at her. She thinks she's evil. Adorable. So, that's this banner. Obviously, if you know, if you're spending on this, if you already know, I would still say I'm not going to be spending on this because I thankfully have every single unit here. I have Yang, I have Fran, I have Raiko, I have Mysterious Heroin X. If I did not have Raiko, I'd be summoning for Raiko. But thankfully, I already have her. Um, here's some caveats. Obviously, uh, because of Imaginary Scramble, that can only mean one thing. It means very close, we're coming to the release of Nemo and Van Gogh. There's also the Korean banner that I've covered in the previous uh, in a previous video that was like four minutes long. Check that one out if you want some more detail than that one. But in that one had some summer units and Abby on it, so it's something to kind of keep in mind in the back of your head. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's for sure 100% definitive coming over, but it's something to kind of keep in mind just in case. Honestly, I saw at least one dude saying, "Please don't come over." This is a mean banner, and I saw one person from Korea saying, I hate that they brought this over. <laughs> it's a very mean banner to just kind of spring on people, but, you know, we'll go sometime. So yeah, that's what's coming up on Fugo. Gonna be interesting. I can't wait for Imaginary Scramble. I've been waiting. I have, I hope to God that they change the banner of Imaginary Scramble so that Nemo and Van Gogh do not share day one. On JP, they shared the same banner day one. I don't want that, it's actually worse. I want it to be either Van Gogh first or Nemo first, and then I can try. I want both of them, but not enough to summon on a banner with both of them on it at the same time like a crazy person, but I digress. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much. If you watched it this far, you can always leave a like, comment down below. It helps me out, the algorithm and stuff like that. Uh, leave a like, subscribe to me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until next time, peace out.